Okay, I've thought about it, and I'm planning to try to have A give someone else a round, or perhaps A himself. Someone else is going to move up and try to take a shot at Q. So E continues with his heroic plan. So his fourth move, he moves to H13. Let me check if anything happens there. Besides everything else that's already happened. Okay, we get 763, which I think is the one we just had a second ago, uh, which was, uh, right, if S6, S0, and S13 have all occurred, no event. And, and S6 was the one we just got, by the way. I need to mark that sighting off as well. So now, uh, here, S6 has occurred. Okay, so... No more events. So now, uh, that was it for E for his action. So we've already moved him down. So now we have H, F, and A who can still act during this part of the turn. So H is too far back to do anything. He cannot see to shoot Q through this roadway since the roadway is at a higher elevation. It's blocking line of sight for everyone. So we really need to get someone over here. Now, we could try H. Oh no, sorry. H can't do anything. And the other guy who can act is F. Right, so F is under here and he could try to do something. So maybe we'll do that. So F, uh, well actually there's a little bit of a problem here. Uh, F is in a canoe that is not currently beached. So, uh, hmm, I guess uh, Eaton may have gone a step too far. Uh, well, we need to figure out some way to help. Uh, I think what we'll do is, is D is in this canoe. Maybe he'll be able to do something. Uh, let's see what it takes to get out of the canoe. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, I don't think F is going to be able to get where he needs to go right now. Uh, so for the moment what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, Anderson uh, give his uh, activation to D. So Anderson gives D an order and says, step right up there, we need you to jump into, into action. So D gets an action, and D is going to take his action. It takes D one movement point to step out of the canoe, so he's now in the hex, but out of the canoe. One movement point to move here, and two movement points to move here. And then he will take his free stance change and crouch. And I've already been to L12 before. Let me just check L12 and K13 to make sure nothing else happens. I don't remember if we checked L12 under this condition level. Yeah, L12 is an S3 and K13. Is 762. And 762 is if that's right. Okay, no event because S0 and S3 have both occurred. So he makes it there and now he's going to be in position. He just has line of sight right along the hex sides here to G, just like E did when E was here. So, so D is going to be trying to take Q out. So now that leaves um, H and F with actions to take. So let's take care of H first. H will move his entire move to move there. Actually, we know this is pretty much safe territory right at the moment. So why don't we step it up a little? He'll stand up and how far can H move? He's only got a movement allowance of three, so he can't really move into two woods hexes anyways because they cost, uh, woods hex costs two. So he'll just move along crouched as normal. And then last but not least, we have F there. So F is in the other canoe along with Anderson. 
I'm going to go ahead and put this beached canoe underneath just to get it out of the way. So the question is, F could continue down the stream in the canoe that he's in with Anderson in the boat, or he could jump out and try to get in position to do something. And I think that might be a good idea. So F will beach the canoe. And let's see, does that, how much time does that take him during actions? Uh, let's see, can beach at a cost of one movement point. So that took him one movement point, and then he will spend one more to step out of the canoe, that's two. He has a movement point allowance of four, so moves three, and I can't quite get him into the rubble, unfortunately, so he will... Uh, just end up crouching there uh, in the crater. Okay, so now everybody's moved. So now we're on to our next set of activities. And what we're going to do is we're going to have e try, uh, Eaton try his heroic movement. So he will take his action now. And he's going to try and throw a grenade into the bunker. So, we take a look here at the chart, and we see that uh, when you're throwing a grenade, we're throwing it at a range of two hexes, and we're trying to hit a target which is indoors. So first of all, there's a 5% chance the grenade will be a dud, so let's roll for that. So we got a 16, so it is not a dud. Then we look at a range of two for a grenade but an inside target is considered to be short range, so we have a base targeting number of five. Then we look here, these are the only combat modifiers for throwing grenades. Minus two for wounded, minus three if throwing through a non-adjacent aperture, which we are. So we have a two that we have to roll to hit. And then these other things, including weapon skill. And our weapon skill for Eaton is a two. So that means 0 through 4. So basically a 50-50 chance he can throw this grenade in here. And then he is going to probably fall prone. Which is not going to give him much cover in the open, but it's better than nothing. Okay, Eaton makes his heroic throw of the grenade. And he succeeds and throws the grenade into the pillbox. But now, there's one little problem. Uh, when he throws the grenade in the pillbox, the Germans get a perception test, uh, and uh, they have a possibility of throwing the grenade back out. So when a grenade strikes a hex, every wear soldier in the hex can make a special perception check. If they make the check, has any turns remaining in the round, and is standing or crouching, he can spend a turn to perform the action of tossing the satchel charger grenade out of explosion range, where it explodes harmlessly. An unwounded soldier who makes the check but does not have a turn remaining can immediately fall prone at no cost. Okay, so the challenge is, is that, so both Germans have a chance to do something, but only X is standing and has the chance to throw it away. So X is the only one we need to roll for. X's perception is five. Oh no, so he's got a very good chance of being successful here. I really hadn't counted on that. Okay, so he rolls. And he gets a three. Oh no! He throws the grenade back outside where it explodes harmlessly. So Eaton's entire sacrifice may have been in vain. As he falls prone. Actually, I need a prone marker for him. Oh no, this is terrible. Didn't After that heroic throw, what such a failure. Okay, so that's Eaton. So now let's try... Uh, uh, having uh, Dump, uh, who's D? Davis these days, used to be Dumpkey. Uh, so Davis is going to take a shot at Q over there in the woods. So he's at a range of one, two, three, four, five, six. So at a range of six, uh, Davis has a regular M1 rifle. So semi automatic rifle. First thing he has to do is roll for. Uh, jam, 40-something, so no jam, and I said he was at a range of 6, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 6, so 
Six where for a semi-automatic rifle is short range. So he starts with a base target number of five. Target is crouching in uh, woods. So in minus three. So that gives him a target number of two. And then his weapon skill is a plus one. So his target number is a three. Ooh, not very good. Zero through three to hit. And he gets a four and he misses. Now he rolls to see if he's out of ammo. 25% chance. 30 some 30. So he is not out of ammo. But his turn is done. So that's not good. Not good at all. Okay, so now who's left? Uh yeah, who is left? Um hmm. Wow, this is very desperate. Uh, well, let's see. Um, let's have uh, what we might, what I think I can do here with Fortson is have him move forward and try to snap fire and take somebody out. Um, so he will do a move and a, a snap fire action. So he gets to move half of his movement allowance, which is two, and his movement allowance is four. Steps into the rubble there. Now he's going to snap fire, and uh, I've got a choice of targets. I'm going to shoot at this guy, I think. Uh, it's, either way, it's probably not good. So we're shooting X, who is standing in the bunker, so I'm trying to shoot through an, a, a window of the bunker. So let's see, let's take a look. We have the... Um, some automatic rifle, we roll for a jam, does not jam, and uh, we're, we get a 5 for a base number, and then we're shooting at an aperture, interior, through aperture, not adjacent to firer, and there's a footnote, okay, blah, 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 don't worry about that, soldier standing, so at a minus 2, so 5 minus 2 is a 3. And then uh, Fordson's uh, weapon skill is a plus two. So he has a zero through five to hit. Uh, Soldier X. Come on. Yes, he hits. And we roll for what sort of a hit he did. And it's a six. So we go over here, semi-automatic rifle on a six. Incapacitated. Right there. Excellent. So... That German is, uh, let's see, where is the incapacitated markers? Uh, oh, here we go. So X is incapacitated, so he is basically out of it. He falls prone, uh, so they're both prone. X will not get a turn now. And we roll to see if our weapon is out of ammo. It is not. Uh, by the way, I do need to cross off one thing, which was uh, Eaton's grenade that he used. Okay. I think I'm going to start using a pencil. These pens just don't write. Okay. Well, we'll work on that. Okay. So, uh, so that was Fordson's turn. So now... Now, who do we move? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, uh, somebody needs to shoot this sentry over here, W. And we've already seen that shooting people in the woods is not so easy. Uh, well, Anderson has a line of sight on him, so he's probably the best prospect. So he's still in the canoe. Uh, so, uh, rather than having him get out and start snap firing, he, he's basically treated as crouch. I'm just going to show him that way uh, in the canoe there. And, uh, well, actually, I can show him as standing if I want. He still gets treated as crouched if he gets shot at. Eh, it doesn't make sense for him to be standing in a canoe. Okay, so, uh, which... Uh, Okay, which I actually meant when Fordson got out to here, he would have had to, since it took him two moves to get there, that's fine. He had a chance to crouch. Uh, 
So in fact, he stood up, went there, then he could have moved here, but he had to, uh, oh shoot, so he, he needed to stay standing so he could move, snap, fire, and then crouch. Or he could move, snap, fire, and then do fall prone for his free status, stance change, which is even better. That's what he would have wanted to do. Uh, actually, thinking about that, could Dumpkey have done the same thing? Uh, two, can't remember far, that far back. So, All right, so Anderson at a range of three. Anderson's got a Thompson submachine gun, so that may be a little bit better at short range. So, uh, submachine gun, 5% uh, chance of uh, uh, jamming. Now, he or 10% chance if he's going to snap fire. Now, the question is, does he want to snap fire or not? Let's see what his odds are. At a range of three, he is in short range, so he would have a base target number of five. Um, and our target is crouched in the brush. So that's at a minus one, so he's at a four. And uh, he would get a bonus for automatic weapon fire if he took it. So he's got a shot at a 4, plus his weapon skill of plus 2. So he's got a shot at a 6, or he can snap fire and have two shots at a 4. So two shots at a 4 is better odds than one shot at a 6. Um, so I guess I will uh, uh, probably want to snap fire with him. I'm trying to think if... Uh, how that works uh, if he runs out of ammo on the first shot or if I think I have to I may only have to roll after both shots so okay we're gonna snap fire so 10% chance of a jam okay 40 something so he does not jam so well, let's roll for his first shot uh, so he needed a 4 0 through 4 to hit 0 a hit and we roll for damage and we get a 3 so the submachine gun on a three is a wound. So we have wounded the German. Well, that's good. We'll see what happens with that in just a second. Uh, now, let me just double check what happens on the checking for uh, ammunition. <laughs> 